too cool for school. Pod Squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yona. I'm a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM, and welcome, welcome to a brand new episode of Exploring All Nine Podiatric Medical Schools. And in today's amazing episode, we actually have David, who is a fourth year medical student at Kent State University, and he's going to answer all your questions about this amazing program. Also, he is the founder and creator of the podcast Soul Purpose 20. And if you guys haven't heard of it, Go check it out. He interviews a lot of students from different types of schools and doctors as well, answering those really, really hard questions about podiatry. Diksha and I were actually on his podcast, I believe three months ago, and we had a great time. It was actually our very first podcast with him. And again, he, he made the whole process really simple, really fun, and really enjoyable. Without further ado, I'm happy to present David. Take it away. Hey, Yona and Diksha. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be on your YouTube channel today. My name is David Chandra. I'm a fourth year podiatry student at Kent State College of Podiatric Medicine out in Independence, Ohio. I'm here today, hopefully, to be able to answer some questions for prospective students that are interested in applying to podiatry schools this cycle or even in future cycles as well. So hopefully the answers and the insights that I give into Kent State, the city of Independence, the city of Cleveland, will help you guys in the decision-making process of where you want to go to school for the next four years. So let's get this started. First question, what's the area like? what to do, what to see, what to eat, and in general, safety. Well, Independence, Ohio is a great city, very safe city, residential city with a lot of businesses in and around the school. It's 20 minutes south of downtown Cleveland. In Independence itself, there's so much to do. You can enjoy Top Golf, which is right in our backyard. You can go across the street and go to Melt, which is a great bar and grill area with great sandwiches, I recommend it. Naf, Naf, Chipotle, so many different things that you can enjoy. If you go up north to downtown Cleveland, you have Lake Erie, you can enjoy Edgewater Beach in the summer for free concerts. You can go to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if you're into music. If you're a sports person, Cleveland is a great sports city with the Browns, the Cavs, the Indians, year-round sports. You can go to Ohio City, you can go to Tremont to enjoy a lot of food places, especially Town Hall, Nano Brew in Ohio City. You can also go to Market Garden out in Ohio City. You can enjoy Barrio, which is a great taco place which is in Tremont. And so there's so many things that you can do in and around the city. And one of the biggest things that is an advantage for Cleveland and the Metro Cleveland area is the Metro Parks. A lot of people, a lot of the classmates love to go to the Metro Parks to enjoy biking, hiking, enjoying the views, running, jogging, whatever it may be to kind of get yourself away from school, relieve yourself of the stress that you might be having. So there's a lot of things that you can enjoy that you can do, even though it might be a smaller city compared to where the other schools are located as well. And in terms of living situation, Ohio and the city of Cleveland and the Metro Cleveland area is very, very affordable for students especially for those who are taking loans like i said i'm a student here and i've lived with a roommate for the past three years and uh, split between the both of us we usually pay about 545 to 600 dollars so i pay 600 he pays 600 that's rent plus the utilities included and it was really nice the place that i lived in was stony run condominiums which was two bedroom, two bath. So we were out of our ways, we enjoyed our space. And at the same time, we enjoyed being roommates with each other as well too. And there's a lot of other areas where you can live in. You can live in Independence, you can live in Parma, you can live in Strongsville, you can live in North Royalton, Broadview Heights, which is where I lived at Stony Run. A lot of the first year students live out in Regency Apartments, which is out in Parma, Ohio. So all of these cities are about 15, 20, 25-ish minutes from the school and most of the people don't usually end up living around Independence mainly due to the fact that there isn't as many apartment style areas in Independence itself. There's a lot of homes which a lot of people can live in if they choose to but these are the cities that are there and very affordable like I said as well too and class size you know Kent State has a big class I believe it is the biggest class size that we have out of all nine podiatry schools we usually start at about 125 and we accept that in our first year so we allow a lot of applicants to apply and we take a lot of applicants as well too especially based on your merit and based on your status and based on your grades and based on your MCAT and those things that really help in the application process to help you stand out as well too and do we have a specific system that we do our curriculum wise yes we do we have a semester system where 
we have one semester, which is known as our fall semester, then a spring semester, then a summer semester. And so we have block exams where we have exam weeks, where once a month we have an exam week where you might have classes, histology, physiology, and anatomy in one entire week, and so on and so forth as the classes compile on when you go in the future. But it's a semester-based system, so after you're done with that class in one semester, you don't look back at it again. Are there research opportunities on campus? There are, especially due to the fact that we're associated with Kent State University, which is located out in Kent, Ohio, about 40 minutes south of Independence, Ohio. A lot of research opportunities that Dr. Kavlek does on our campus, which is great to look into, especially if you're interested in it. And most people don't venture into that, but it's something that I think if you take the advantage of and if you're very passionate about, you should definitely look into it. And like I said, we have those opportunities at our school that a lot of the attendings and a lot of the professors work with students to perform. And do you have any clubs at your school? We do have many clubs. Um, we have APMSA, we have IPMSA, we have basketball, we have soccer clubs, we have anything and everything that uh, students may want on campus. And it's a lot of diversity, um, things that you wanna do academically. You can attend workshops where some programs or some clubs will hold sutra workshop or cadaver workshops or anything of that nature where they call in um, reps to be able to bring in supplies for us to work with and things of that nature. And you can also, like I said, enjoy a basketball club or a soccer club or a running club or whatever it might be that you wanna do outside of school that you wanna get yourself into. And due to the fact that it's such a big school, you get to meet so many different people in your first year, second year, third year, and fourth year class. Kent State specifically is an only podiatry school at the location that we're at in Independence, Ohio, there's no DOs, there's no MDs, there's no nursing, there's no pharmacy students attached with us. It's solely podiatry, so everything that you do within that building only focused on podiatry. So that is huge, and that's something that I took into account when I started school at Kent State as well, too. We have a gym, we have a cafeteria that's located right on campus. Uh, it's a very small gym that most of the students use and then throughout the day, a cafeteria where you have money on your card, which you can use to swipe, and I think, I believe you get around $400 per semester to use in the cafeteria. We have breakfast and lunch, usually dinner is not served on campus. Um, so those that stay on campus late will usually pack lunches or go to the nearby food areas right next to Independence. Like I mentioned earlier, Chipotle is right there, Subway is right there, Pop Belly is right there, a lot of fast food areas that you can enjoy, uh, especially if you want a quick bite to eat when you have a lot of things to do that day as well. Um, are there any academic support services for students? And there are many things that are there on campus, resources on campus that students can use to help themselves um, support themselves in their academics. Various different tutoring sessions. We have various different uh, faculty members that help counseling students, giving advice to students um, if they're struggling in any subject or any topic or anything that they may be having a difficult time with. And the school keeps on tabs on students that are struggling, especially to make sure that they get back on the right track. And I think that's very crucial, uh, especially when you're going through four years, tough curriculum as well too. So it's very important. And I think it's very good that the school incorporates that into their um, system as well. And like I said, the next question I was able to answer as well, are there any counseling services for students with mental health? And this goes along with academic support as well. Those who are in the faculty, there's certain members that are there that allow students um, to come into their office to be able to speak with them about things that they might be stressed about, whether it be school related, whether it be familial related, external, internal, whatever it might be, they can take their problems up with these faculty members as well. And it's also another avenue, another way to help students um, guide them throughout their entire four years. And my most favorite part about Kent State, about my school, is the fact that it's solely podiatry and everyone that you talk to, professors or faculty members or attendings or even students that are with you, um, it allows you to just obtain more knowledge, increase your knowledge more and more and more because everything is focused around the field that you're gonna envision yourself being in once you get out of school in the four years. So I think that is one of the biggest things that I really enjoy about Kent State and the fact that it's a full-on focus with podiatry really kind of helps zone in and helps you really figure things out as you go 
um, with classmates and upperclassmen as well too and it's a very great friendly community that we have at Kent State and it, it is, it's a community where you know that you can rely on each other uh, for help when it comes to exams or when it comes to a decision making process for something big that we might have to do or some notes that we might need that we might miss if you didn't make it to a class or things of that nature as well too. The next question we have here is does the school have a special group to help spouses or family members? I don't fit into that category so I might not be able to answer that question fully but there probably are ways in which the school incorporates that as well. Does your school offer scholarships? And they do, um, especially when you're an incoming student as a first year, the school gives you different opportunities to gain scholarships based on your merit, based on your GPA, as well as your MCAT. And usually you can keep those scholarships into your second year if you become top 10% or top 15% of the class. And those are the people that will carry on their scholarships as well. And there's various different ways, various different things that you can do to attain other scholarships that are externally related to the school as well that the school provides for students that are in need or would desire any scholarship. Um, do you need a car? Is there public transportation? And like I said, because most people don't live near the school, there's no dorm type setting. Most of the people will have a car, will need a vehicle to drive to school and be prepared for the snow out in Cleveland, Ohio. It's not simple. Um, bring your snow, uh, snow brush with you. Make sure to clean off your cars during the winter time because it can get frosty. It can get really snowy as well too. So keep that in mind if you're coming from a really warm area like California, Texas, or Florida. Take that into account and make sure to always have a car with you or somebody that you know that might can, that can lend you a car for a certain period of time till you get your own. And is there any jobs the students can take on as first years in school? such as peer tutors and note takers. A lot of times first years don't really get involved too much on campus, especially work related wise. One of the biggest things that first years can do and get themselves into is possibly becoming student ambassadors. And that you do as soon as you start school, a few months in, once you get your feet wet and once you get to know and understand what's going on and what the school is all about so that you can also be able to go to those interview processes and help other incoming students and prospective students in that interview day as well too. So that is one of the biggest things that most first years do. And on top of that, usually they also man the library where they sit at the front desk and kind of help uh, in the organization of the library, uh, picking up books or giving out you know different uh, uh, materials that might be that might that a student might need at that point in time so these are the types of jobs uh, students do on campus and you do get paid for those jobs but as uh, in terms of tutoring that only comes during second and third year once you've accomplished some uh, accomplished and got through some classes during your first year so these are things that you want to look into once you become a second year student. But first year, like I said, you can be a student ambassador or work in the library um, just to get some money, just to get some experience and just to get an idea of what it feels like to work and also be able to go to school. And that might not always be the thing that everyone wants to do, but it's an opportunity for students to be able to do something like that and things of that nature as well. How often are certain facilities open for students? So the school is usually open from 6 a.m. or I believe 6.30, sorry, till 12 a.m. at midnight. Most of the time, uh, throughout the entire day, the anatomy lab is open. All the facilities within the school will be open. There's a security guard that's on uh, duty throughout the entire day, usually after hours. It's usually a police officer that's usually at the security desk in the front and your ID that you have will get you in, in and out of the school, wherever you need to go and things of that nature. And during exam weeks, uh, the building is usually open till 2 a.m. and you would have to check with the security guard at front. That is usually there during exam weeks. Otherwise, it usually closes at midnight. Like I said, as long as the school is open, the facilities are open. Professors might not be on campus all day till you stay and till you leave, but their office hours might be there till four or five and you would want to make sure with a specific professor that you're um, looking to meet with. Um, and let them know that you're coming in so they can fix the time with you. And is there any other information that I think I can provide for you guys? Um, like I said, at the end of the day, it's the right fit for each and every student. Um, for me, I applied to two different schools. And when I came into the interview at Kent State, I really enjoyed it. I felt that friendly environment, that camaraderie amongst each other to help each other, to encourage each other. And Kent State really provides you with the resources and the things that you need to find success in your four years. And now as a fourth year student, I can look back and know that I made the right decision. I have no regrets in the decision that I made. And sometimes I look back at it and I think, hmm, maybe I could have gone to a bigger city such as 
possibly in the Chicago area or out of the Philly area or down in Miami and things of that nature. But I really enjoyed Cleveland for what it was. And even though it was a smaller city compared to those other cities that I just listed, it was a city that still allowed me to be able to get outside of school, enjoy extracurricular activities with friends and classmates of mine, and just to be able to have that balance between a student lifestyle as well as a person that just wants to have fun, go out and spend time with friends in whatever capacity that may be. So hopefully this helps you guys in your decision making process of where you want to go. And like I said, explore, do your research of every different school that's there, all the nine schools, you know, that'll help you in being able to pinpoint which one is a right fit for you. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you interview, when you go there is when you'll know if this is the place for you or not. And so thank you guys once again for hearing me out. Hopefully what I did and what I was able to answer for you guys helps out. So see you all soon. Thank you guys.